One of the oldest debates in psychology is the argument about whether we are determined by nature or nurture. Now, there are some people that believe that nature is what determines us. In other words, your grandparents did it to you. There are some people that believe that nurture is what determines us. In other words, it's your parents' fault. Nature, nurture, parents, grandparents, my boss, my spouse, my dog, somebody's got to be responsible for the messes I get in. It can't be my fault, right? I'd like to suggest to you that we are determined by nature or nurture. As Dr. Stephen Covey said, between stimulus and response, humans have the freedom to pause and choose their response. We are the product of our choices. There was once a 12-year-old little girl who had a dark secret that she kept hidden away. Now, very shy and quiet and lonely, she didn't have many friends, and she didn't talk to the ones that she had. She was afraid they would find out what Daddy was really doing when he tucked her in at night. She had been told that she shouldn't tell anyone because they wouldn't understand. She didn't understand. I still don't understand. I was too ashamed to tell anyone. Dad would wait until we were home alone to make me dress up so he could take pictures of me. He told me it wasn't a sin because God had given me to him. And he told me that no one else would understand. It progressed as I got older. By the time I was 17, he was regularly having sex with me and would bargain with me for sexual favors in exchange for something like an outing with my friends. He was always saying he wanted to give me the, the ultimate experience in life. Now, the ultimate experience looked like a lot of different things. One time it meant taking nude pictures of me riding my horse. One time it meant tying me up naked and putting a red rubber ball gag in my mouth and beating me black and blue with a riding crop. One time it meant watching another man have sex with me, and then they changed places. There were times when life was almost not worth living. And I considered a razor blade and a tub of warm water to end it. Now, I left home at 19. I met a knight in a shiny Camaro. And I left behind the father who sexually abused me for years and the mother who would later blame me for it. And I didn't have anything when I left home. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a high school diploma. I'd never been to school. And after I left, I built a wall around what happened to me. And to survive, I locked my past up behind that wall, and I threw away the key. Mark Twain said that the two greatest days in our life are the day we're born and the day that we discover why. Now, I discovered my why on August 14th of 2013. That's when I shared my story publicly for the first time. And in doing so, I shattered the bonds of shame and fear and false guilt that had held me captive for more than 20 years. I realized that in building a wall, I'd created my own sort of prison, a prison of the past. Now, Isaac Newton said we build too many walls and not enough bridges. We all experience pain or grief or, or hardship in, li in life. But resilience is rising from the ashes of what happens to us in life and burning brighter because of the flames. Resilience is the difference between I didn't die and I learned to live again. Resilience is building a bridge out of the past instead of building a wall around it. Now, I've got a simple blueprint for building this bridge using the acronym RISE. R stands for respond proactively. We don't get to decide what happens to us in life, but we can decide how we respond to it. Reconcile with the past, because you know what? So often, we can't grab onto today because we won't let go of yesterday. I stands for identify accurately. 
Identify what you can control and focus on that. Viktor Frankl said, when I can no longer change a situation, I'm challenged to change myself. And S stands for step forward consistent, consistently. If the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, don't just take one step and stop. You got to take the second step and the third step. You got to take a single step forward each and every day. And E stands for experience joy. Joy is not a product of our circumstances. It's a choice that we make. Choose joy. In closing, let me leave you with this. I don't share my story so anyone will feel sorry for me. I share my story so that everyone can look at me and say, if she can do it, so can I. We can take what life hands us and we can be bitter about it or we can be better because of it. What happens to us in life is not what's most important. What's most important is what you do and who you become from that moment on. What matters is the rest of your story. Thank you.